Hey guys, Mr. B here. This is the last video for the DBA2 review. This will be questions 41 through 52. This one is dealing with the coordinate plane. And it says that she graphed point G on the coordinate grid, which you see right there. That's the black one. And it says she will graph point H at a location of five units away from it. But it doesn't tell you which direction away from it. So what I did was started at G and then counted five units away in every direction that you could. So I did the green ones, one, two, three, four, five away this direction. And I did five away in this direction, five away in this direction, and five away in this direction. Because it doesn't tell us what direction. So then I went and found the coordinates for each direction that I went. So this green dot that I've circled um, from the origin is one for the X value and three for the Y value over there. The blue value from the origin is negative four all the way up to positive eight. The yellow value from the origin is negative nine all the way to positive three. And this value from the origin is negative 4 down to negative 2. So I just made a list of the coordinates that go with each possible choice. And it says which one could represent H. And the only one that's correct is 1, 3. So the only one that it is, it, the only one it can be is the green one right there. The other ones... If you go look at where they land, they don't land here, here, or here. If you were to go plot these on the graph, they wouldn't land there. You can see, like for, I'll just do this one for example, negative four, positive five. So here's the origin, negative one, two, three, four, positive five, one, two, three, four, five. So that's not five units away from G, that's only two units away from G. And if you did the rest, you would find the same, they don't work. Number 42, um, a restaurant offered cooking classes on 24 of the 30 days in November. What decimal is equivalent to the fraction of days in November the classes were offered at the restaurant? So it's, it's 24 out of 30, so it's a fraction 24 over 30. You can just divide it, 24 divided by 30 and you'll get 0.8. You can simplify the fraction. Um, half of 24 is 12, half of 30 is 15, half of 12 is four, half of, oh, not half, excuse me. Um, from here to here, I divided them both by two, but from here to here, I divided them both by three. So 12 divided by three is four, 15 divided by three is five, and four divided by five is also 0.8. So this was a 0 0.8 is the answer, and this would have been one that you needed to bubble in and fill in with the correct place value. That one's pretty simple change to a decimal just by dividing it. All right, 43. Uh, it's saying that this person bought a bag of marbles. He took the marbles out of the bag one at a time. He recorded the color of each marble in his tally chart, so I, I counted up the tally marks and listed a total for each one. And then the question says, in which table do the percentages represent the relative frequency of these marble colors? You're not going to know what relative frequency means. Just think what frequent means. Frequent means it happens often. So relative frequency just means how, oft or how often something happens or how frequently something occurs. In this case, as a percentage. So you still just have individual numbers out of your total for all of it. And a total is 50. So if you add up all of these numbers, you get 50. So black was 15 out of 50, and yellow was 10 out of 50, and so on. So I just took those fractions and changed them over to equivalent fractions that have 100 as the denominator so I could easily tell you the percent. So once I did that, black was 30%, yellow was 20%, green was 24%. 
red and white down here. Red was 10% and white was 16%. So I need a list that shows black 30, yellow 20, green 24, red 10% and white 16% and answer choice D is the only one that has those percentages that go with those numbers. So relative frequency is just how often something happens. All right. Number 44 is just an algebraic question. It says the cost of downloading one song is 99 cents. Which equation can be used to find T? Uh, the cost in dollars of downloading N songs. So T is an unknown cost that you get by multiplying an unknown number of songs times 99 cents each. So unknown number of songs times 99 cents is your total cost. And you just rearrange, rearrange those things in the different ways that they can be written. You can just put the number next to the letter. That still means multiplication. You can put one of them in parentheses. That still means multiplication. And so the only one that matches anything that we have is H. That matches what we've got here. It's just flipped around. So, um, Everything else has got the stuff in the wrong place. So just build an equation that matches what the story is talking about and you'll be fine. All right, 45. Students in Ms. Guerrero's class must complete at least 40 math problems. That's 40 or more. Um, I wrote that down because I thought it would be important, but you really don't even need that for the problem. So uh, they have to do 40 or more for homework every week. The table shows the progress. Of four students on Wednesday so here's how much each student has done and they've given them to you in different formats you got a decimal a fraction a percent and another fraction so what you're trying to do is order these from the biggest one to the smallest one greatest to least but you get to come in order to compare them you have to make them all decimals first because that's the easiest thing to do um, you can make them all percents if you want to, but that's gonna be probably a little bit harder. And don't make them all fractions because that will take forever because you have to get common denominators. So this one's already a decimal. You should have two thirds memorized. Two thirds is 0 0.6 repeating. So now that one is easy to make into a decimal. 100% is one whole. 100% is all of it. So you can even use your percent to decimal strategy and move that over twice and get 1.00, 100% is one whole. 45 over 40, I couldn't really think of um, a fast way to change that to a decimal, so I just did, I just did the division, I just divided it. Um, 40 goes into 45 once, you gotta subtract and get five, bring down a zero, 40 goes into 50 once. Subtract and get 10, bring down another zero, you get 100. 40 goes into 100 two times, and that's 80. And you can see that I stopped. I did not continue my division because it didn't matter. All I needed to do, whoa, sorry. All I needed to do was compare these to a few decimal places. I did not need to keep going with my division. So this decimal is longer, but I don't need to keep doing it. I just need to find the greatest. Well, no matter how long this gets, it's already going to be the most because it's 1.1 something, and the next biggest one is just 1.0. So that's the biggest. The smallest is 0 0.4. So I need a list that starts with 1.12 something. Actually, I'm, it's, it's gonna use the fraction version. So I need a list that starts with 45 over 40 and ends with 0 0.4. There's only one answer choice that starts with that and ends with that. Uh, but you can put them all in order just by looking at the decimals, this is the biggest, this comes next, then 0 0.6, then 0 0.4. So we need them in this order. We need 45 over 40, 100%, 0 0.6 repeating, actually, sorry, no, two thirds, and then 0 0.4. So once you have them all changed to decimals, it's easy to see which list uh, is in order. All right, 46. Prime factorization, you need to know prime numbers. 
we sang a song about this so we could understand what the prime numbers were. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. Those are our prime numbers. So we're going to factor the number 110 until we get all prime numbers at the bottom. There's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, 110 can be made from 10 times 11. 10 comes from 2 times 5 and 11. You can't make that with anything except 11 and 1. So 2, 5, and 11. You could divide 110 by 2 because it's an even number. So 2 times 55. 2 is already a prime number and 55 can be made from 11 times 5. And then again, 2, 11, and 5 are all prime numbers. So once you have all prime numbers at the bottom of your factor tree, you're done. So you don't have any of them that repeat. You just have a single 2, a single 5, and a single 11. So that's your prime numbers at the bottom, prime factorization. <clears throat> 47. Real easy question if you're using common sense. It says in 2012, there were approximately 8,950 public libraries in the United States. A survey found that 76% of those libraries offered free access to electronic books. Based on this info, how many libraries offered free access to electronic books? So they're saying 76% of 8,950. Well, you know 76% is over half. So here's your 8,950, and here's half of it. Half of 8,000 is 4,000, half of 900 is 450, half of 50 is 25. So together, 50% would be 4,475. So answer choice B and D are way below that, so you know there's no way that can be it because you're supposed to be finding something way over this amount. You can probably look and tell this 80, 8,190 is too close to 100% because it's almost all of the 8,950. So you can rule out A just about because that number is, is too close to 100% of this number. <clears throat> so you could answer that question probably without figuring out exactly 76% of it, but of is multiply. So 76% of 8,950 is 76% times 8,950. 76% is just 76 over 100. 8,950 over 1 is just the same as 8,950. So we multiply them, multiply straight across, get 100 down here, multiply straight across. I don't know, so I came over here to the side and worked it out. Uh, I've got 60, excuse me, 680,200 over 100. That's dividing by 100. And just remember, if you want to divide a number by 100, move the decimal two places to the left. So now it's 6,802, which is what we thought it was going to be just using common sense. So try to work these things out in your brain before you go start messing around and making any mistakes mathematically. Just think logically what you think it would be and then go prove it with the math. All right, 48, area of a triangle. Um, <clears throat> you have to use a ruler to measure. So if you measured this, you should have gotten, it's not exactly six, but it says round to the nearest centimeter. So it's closer to six than five, so we call this six. This one right here is closer to four than three, so we call the height right here four centimeters. Uh, your two formulas. On your formula chart for area of a triangle are area equals half times base times height. So half of six times four, six times four is 24, half of 24 is 12. Or my version of the formula, base times height divided by two, six times four divided by two, that's 24 divided by two, and that's 12. So 12 centimeters squared is your area if you use the correct formula. 49 is a histogram, and I have not taught histograms yet, but you should still be able to answer this question. It looks like a bar graph. It's not actually a bar graph. A bar graph looks like the bars on a bar graph are separated like this with this space in between. The bars on a histogram don't have any gap between them. 
So it's more like a list of data. It's more like a dot plot um, than a regular bar graph. So a histogram is not really a bar graph. And when you look at this, it shows the ages of people in the choir. So it means that 15 people are in this range between 18 years old and 24 years old. And 20 people are in this range, 5 people in this range, and so on. And it says, which statement about the data in the histogram must be true? Well, it's talking about half the members are this, and these are this, and there's a total of this. And so you need to do a few other pieces of work to get that. Um, first thing to do is get the total. So I listed all of my numbers here and combine them in little short chunks to figure out that there was 100 total people if you add all these up. Uh, so there was a, definitely 100 total people. So now I can kind of go through my questions. This says more than half of the members are from 46 to 73 years old. Well, 46 all the way to 73, that means I need all of these bars. So in that range of all of this, you had 30, 0, 5, and 15. Well, 30 plus 0 is 30, plus 5 is 35, and 35 plus, 35 plus 15 is 50. So that means there's 50 people in that range. Well, there was 100 total, so 50 is not more than half. So I could cross that out. It says there are more men than women in the choir. You don't have enough information to answer that question doesn't say anything about their gender. It just says their ages and the number of them. You don't know. You can't answer that part. You don't know um, how many you have that are men or how many you have that are women. The choir has a total of 100 members. Yeah, we know that because we already did it up here. We added them all together and got 100. That's what we want. Uh, exactly 20 members are less than 32 years old. No. Here's... 32 is this bar right here, so 31 and below, that's 20 people and 15 people. That's a total of 35 people, so exactly 20 are less than 32 years old. No, exactly 35 are less than 32 years old, so we could cross that out. So that's how you use a histogram to answer some questions. Not too difficult. All right, um, any quality question here? A student needs to collect at least 10 flowers for a science project. At least 10 means 10 is the smallest they can collect, but they could collect more. So whatever they collect has to be equal to 10. That's what that little tiny bar means down there. They can collect 10, but we use the greater than sign above that because they can also collect more than 10. So 10 or more. We're looking for something that has this symbol. And you can see this answer choice right here has it, but so does G. So we need to figure out if we're talking about 7 or 13. So here's your equation. Something plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 10. Well, 7 would work. 7 plus 3 is equal to 10, so that would work. 8 plus 3 is going to be greater than 10, 9 plus 3 is greater than 10, 10 plus 3 is greater than 10, 11 plus 3 is greater than 10, and so on and so on and so on. So n can be 7, or it can be more than 7, because no matter what we pick, as long as it's 7 or more, it's going to be the answer. So on a number line, we would shade that in, and we would say 7 will answer this question, and every single value higher than 7 will also answer this question. So n has to be greater than 7, but it can also be equal to 7. So it was the 7 we needed and not the 13. All right. 51 is a ratio question. It says to make pink paint, Sylvia mixes 7 cups of white paint to every 3 cups of red paint. Which table shows the possible values of W, the number of cups of white paint Sylvia uses, and R, the number of cups of red paint? So your original ratio is seven white to three red. So if you wanna make more of that paint, that means if you wanna keep the color the same, no matter how much paint you mix or how much you make, 
you have to do, if you're going to add seven more white, you got to add three more red. Seven more white, three more red, seven more white, three more red. So here it is. Seven more white, 14, three more red, six. Seven more, 21, three more, nine. Seven more, 28, three more, 12. And there's only one table that has that same information of seven to three, 14 to six, 21 to nine, 28 to 12. So that's how we handle the ratio questions. We mixed paint in class one day and did this with yellow and red. So you should have a good idea of how to keep the ratio intact and get larger amounts of paint and scale that up. All right, last question, number 52. Equivalent expressions, which two expressions are equivalent? Well, this first one is using the distributive property. You're taking that nine, you're multiplying it by everything inside the parentheses. So nine times six, which you see here, and nine times X, which you see here. So those two things, this and this are equivalent. Um, the rest of them are not. This is, you're not multiplying X times eight and X times nine. This is not the distributive property. You're just multiplying eight times nine, which is 72. So this first line is equal to X plus 72, not this down here. Um, same thing here. All you can do in that first line is multiply eight times six, which is 48 and divided by X, which is not what they have written down here. And down here, six times X plus three, the best you can do is maybe rewrite it without the symbol, six times X plus three. Um, this is not six times X plus three, it's six times X and it's also six, or six times X plus six times three. So this is the distributed property also. So those don't match either. Um, I wrote it over here so you can kind of see how once I use the distributed property, nine times six, nine times X, and I'm still adding, so that works. And the rest of these are just not the same. What they did here was they moved the parentheses over and that changes the order of operations. So parentheses say you have to multiply, you gotta do what's inside of here first. Um, eight times nine is different than X plus eight, so you're gonna get different answers. You can't just shift the parentheses over if you have two different symbols. If it was all addition, you could but you can't do that here. This one, what they tried to do was the commutative property with six and X. They tried to say you can switch those around. You can do that with addition and multiplication. You cannot use the commutative property with division and just swap things around because six divided by X is a different answer than X divided by six. Division doesn't work that way. The last one, six times X plus three. Again, they tried to make this the associative property or something like that, they, on this side over here, following PEMDAS, you would have to do six times X first. Over here, once you throw these parentheses in, you have to do X plus three first. So they're two totally different um, expressions. So hopefully you can see um, why F is the correct choice and why those two are equal compared to the other two. All right, that's all 52 questions, guys. You've got everything you need to be studying. You've got tonight to study. You've got tomorrow to study. And Wednesday, I have extremely high expectations for your performance on DVA2. So good luck studying, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.